I think we should get support, and we don't get the support from guys like Paul Ryan. I'm just tired of non-support, and I don't really want to support. What I want to do is I want to win for the people, because Hillary Clinton, she is a disaster. She is a disaster. 27 days now until the election, and the GOP is in a heated war of words with their own nominee. 29 Republicans have now withdrawn their support from Donald Trump. But has the establishment forgotten who the real enemy is? The deputy opinion editor of the Washington Times, Kelly Riddell, is here to weigh in for us this morning. Thank you so much for joining us, first of all. Good morning. Good morning. So what do you think the real reason is behind all of this withdrawal of support? Uh, and have they forgotten, you know, if Hillary Clinton is worse? <laughs> Yeah, you know, there was always going to be a rub, given that Donald Trump is an outsider. He's not a politician. He's not friends with these guys in the GOP establishment here in Washington, D.C. So there was always this natural friction that was going to happen. But Donald Trump won with 14 million votes the GOP primary. That's more than in any Republican primary history. If you're going to look at Ted Cruz, um, at, he also ran as an outsider. Add those votes together, he won more than a plurality. The majority of Republican voters want to see a change in Washington, and that starts with those in Congress. We all need each other to win the, 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 the White House. We need 90 percent of the base to come out and vote if we want to win. So we need to come together. So this friction that's happening, um, it's a little unbelievable to me, given that Hillary Clinton is the one that we want to beat. Even the never Trumpers can agree that Hillary Clinton is corrupt. She represents the status quo and her administration would be more of the same that we've had under Barack Obama. And we want a change. Yeah, well, not all Republicans seem to be on board with that. As I mentioned at the top of the segment, we now have 29 Republicans who originally supported him now pulling that support we have mm -hmm. some of the tweets because it seems like Twitter is the outlet where everyone can sort of vent this is from Joni Ernst saying the comments uh, DJT made are lewd and insulting there is no excuse and no room for such reprehensible and objectifying talk about anyone ever this one's from Jeb Bush who was never really behind Donald Trump yeah. saying as the the grandfather of two precious girls I find that no apology can excuse away Donald Trump's reprehensible comments degrading women uh, it goes on and on uh, Donald Trump mm -hmm. responded here's what he said he says the media and establishment want me out of the race so badly I will never drop out of the race will never let my supporters down um, and then he goes on to say in another tweet that he needs them in order to win how dangerous is this for top Republicans to now be polling their support with just a few weeks now until the election well, it's dangerous for Republicans in general. Our party is splintering as we're watching it implode. Um, we're eating our own. We're supposed to come under. We're supposed to all come under the big tent, and this is just not happening. I think it was all too easy. Donald Trump has been bombastic from the start. He was a reality television show host who made his, who was a billionaire, billionaire playboy. That was his persona. That was his reputation. GOP voters knew that. So for everyone to abandon him on Saturday after that lewd tape came out, and it was lewd and it was crass, and I do not support anything that was in it. But let me just say that it wasn't a shocker. It wasn't a shocker to anyway. So I think there's a phony outcry. They've seen the polls going, and they're Abandoning them because they're looking out for their own political future. That's what I was going to ask just you. Unfortunate. Actually, as we wrap this up, you know, it, it's also important to take a look at those particular states and see mm -hmm. which ones are involved in some competitive races for, mm -hmm. you know, House seats, for Senate seats, also for some of the governors. And then my other question, though, to you is who should uh, extend the olive branch? Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, Donald Trump certainly sounds like he is not. I think that Donald Trump, if he does win this presidency, and he will win it against all odds because he's running against the media, he's running against the establishment, he's running against Democrats, he's going to need to work with Congress to get their agenda passed and the Republican agenda passed. The same token, Paul Ryan's going to need to work with him if he wants to get his agenda passed. There needs, they need to all come together. Donald Trump should be attacking Hillary Clinton. He should not be having a tweet storm against Republicans. Mm -hmm. Yes, they say it takes two to tango. Yeah. Kelly Riddell, thanks for being with us so early this morning. Thank you. Good guys. to see you.